With every passing year, we in this industry continue to reflect upon the awful events of the 6th of July, 1988. However, a 25th anniversary does seem to have a particular resonance, a quarter of a century, another generation coming through. There are no grounds for complacency on safety and that we must never stop learning and improving in the cause of safety. Indeed, safety must be at the heart of all that we do in our industry. I suppose there's some magic in a particular number, but 25 is a pretty good milestone, as it were, which to look back and look forward, mainly forward, and see how far we've come, um, see what's been achieved, and perhaps more importantly, what is yet to be achieved. As I've had occasion to remark today and elsewhere, um, what I asked should be put in place was designed to reduce risk, and I believe did reduce risk, but whether the there is still risk being unattended to, so to speak, out in the field is a matter for management of safety, and that's entirely up to the operators and has been all along the line. You heard Lord Cullen say this morning that audit systems that seek to reassure, as opposed to audit systems that are truly inquisitive and looking to find what the problems are so that they can be tackled, it's the latter you want, not the former. All too often, Senior leaders are looking to be reassured that all is well, and often that's not where they need to be. When you drill down into the causes of these many incidents, and I think we, we, um, we do all of those people a disservice when we talk about them as accidents. These tragedies that continue to happen around the world, when you drill down into what really caused them, it's the same problems that exist, whether it's on or offshore. Uh, failure to see and heed the warning signs that, that the flag that these, these incidents are inevitable. Unless people are looking for and taking note of those leading indicators that tell you that things are not as they should be, we are never going to address some of, and stop this cycle of repetition that, that we see happening around the world. I want workers to be able to stand up and challenge and question. And that is, there is good practice out there, there's, there's no question about it. There's, there's great places to work right now where workers are free and able to do that. But at the same time, there's the opposite end of the scale, NRB. I've got an NRB lying on my desk right now in the last week. And it's not so much the fact that the, the individual's been removed, it's the fallout of that removal. What the effect that it has on the workforce as a whole. We've worked with industry to put guidance in place, but regrettably that's, the guidance just isn't fulfilling, or filling that hole. If you've got a robust collective agreement which has a due process, which prevents an operator instructing a contractor that they don't want that individual back in their installation, then you've got a chance of, of changing the culture, changing attitudes, and improving still further, an already improving picture, but proving it still further um, and creating that culture of openness, transparency, challenge.